What's going on, City Youth? I hope you're having a fantastic week. We are a youth group that's all about knowing Jesus and making Jesus known, and we gather together to encourage one another in life, love, and maturity. Brendan, it is good to see you back, mate. It is good to be back. I uh, had one week off, get roasted just for missing one week, but it was a good time off and happy to be back this week, happy to be involved in our episode again. So let's just get into it. Hey guys, it's Hattie from City, City Youth Melbourne. Um, I'm joined here with uh, Mila and Yana who have been coming to City Youth for the past couple months. I've never met them in real life, but I love them. I love that they have come so continuously um, and just love Jesus. So I'm here, I'm gonna ask them a couple of questions, uh, which is like the first question I feel like I always ask when we're in the first part of youth and like it's really dead silent. I'm like, so guys, what? country would you travel to if you had the opportunity? Um, but what, tra- what country would you guys travel to if you, no COVID, no money, anything, just what, where would you travel? I think I'll travel to New York. Vibes, love it. I think I'd like love to travel to Japan because of like the yeah. food and like the toys that they've created and stuff. Like that'd be pretty fun. Yeah, Japan's sick, and I've been to New York a like, couple times and I absolutely love it. And Japan, I really want to go skiing there one day. I who knows when that'll happen, but it'll happen at some point. Um, and my second question was, how has your relationship with God changed over the past year? Obviously, we've been in COVID, in lockdown. Um, it's been a little bit harder um, for everyone. But how, um, how personally have you seen your relationship with God change in the past uh, 12 months? I personally think maybe going to youth more and like building on my relationship with him and like talking to Christians and stuff because at school like no one's like Christian I can't really you know talk to them about it so it's really good going to youth and like building a relationship with him yeah I feel yeah being in COVID I feel like it's given me more time to like I think you know read my bible and talk to God and I feel like like Miller said going to youth I feel more comfortable talking to God like around people you know that are Christians and you know, as well as like people understanding what you're going through and how you're feeling about God, which is really good. Yeah, so good. And I think, was it Miller? Or you, I'm not sure, which, was it are you who um, got a Bi- the Bible app and signed up? Yeah, yeah. I, I got that. Yeah, so yeah. good. I still am yet to friend you, so I'll do that. Um, we can do little things to get little, um, what are they called? Verse, um, um, I forgot. You like do a verse together and you like, What's the word? I used to do it when I was a kid with my family. I've forgotten. Oh, well, everyone definitely knows what (laughs) I'm talking about. Um, And what are you looking forward to at youth post-COVID? Obviously, you guys haven't uh, met anyone in person, but what are you looking forward to most? I think just meeting everyone in person, you know, getting to know everyone well and learning about Jesus in, like, person with everyone. Yeah. Yeah, like, I'd have to say I agree with Miller and also, like, playing the games and eating, like, chocolate. Eating the food, (laughs) not having separate snacks. (laughs) Yeah, no, (laughs) this is so fun in real, like, in person. Um, It's really good to, obviously, you connect so much more when you're in person, obviously. So I'm really excited for next year. And even as restrictions ease, we might be able to get um, some other stuff in there, like Christmas party before the end of the term. But yeah anyway thanks uh for watching um thanks for letting me interview you girls um and we'll catch ya see you later guys thank you Bye. bye In the days of Ahaz, the son of Jotham, son of Uzziah, king of Judah, Rezin, the king of Syria, and Pekah, son of Romalia, the king of Israel, came up to Jerusalem to wage war against it, but could not yet mount an attack against it. When the house of David was told, Syria is in league with Ephraim, the heart of Ahaz and the heart of his people shook as the trees of the forest shake before the wind. 
And the Lord said to Uzziah, Go out to meet Ahaz, you and Shear Jashub, your son. At the end of the conduit of the upper pool on the highway to the washer's field. And say to him, Be careful, be quiet, do not fear, and do not let your heart be faint because of these two smouldering stumps of firebrands. That the fierce anger of Rezin and Syria and the son of Ramalia. Because Syria, with Ephraim and the son of Ramalia, has devised evil against you, saying, Let us go up against Judah and terrify it, and let us conquer it for ourselves, and set up the son of Tabeel as king in the midst of it. Thus says the Lord God, It shall not stand, and it shall not come to pass. For the head of Syria is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is resin. And within 65 years, Ephraim will be shattered from being a people. And the head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is the son of Ramalia. If you are not firm in faith, you will not be firm at all. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. And he said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary men, that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey when he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the boy knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land whose two kings you dread will be deserted. The Lord will bring upon you and upon your people and upon your father's house such days as have not come since the day that Ephraim departed from Judah, the king of Assyria. In that day the Lord will whistle for the fly that is at the end of the streams of Egypt, and for the bee that is in the land of Assyria. And they will all come and settle in the steep ravines, and in the clefts of the rocks, and on all the thorn bushes, and on all the pastures. In that day the Lord will shave with a razor that is hired beyond the river, with the king of Assyria, the head and the hair of the feet, and it will sweep away the beard also. In that day a man will keep alive a young cow and two sheep, and because of the abundance of milk that they give he will eat curds, for everyone who is left in the land will eat curds and honey. In that day every place where there used to be a thousand vines worth a thousand shekels of silver will become briars and thorns. With bow and arrows a man will come there, for all the land will be briars and thorns. And as for all the hills that used to be hoed with a hoe, you will not come there for fear of briars and thorns, but they will become a place where cattle are let loose and where sheep tread. So, we begin this passage by looking at King Ahaz of the nation of Judah, God's people. Ahaz and his people are in trouble. He has two armies that are after him, Syria and Israel. But he has a way out of this mess. The prophet Isaiah has a message for him. His message is that God will save him from his enemies. All Ahaz has to do is ask God for a sign and all of his troubles will be over. Ahaz replies just by saying, nah, I'm good, uh, you keep your sign, God. You see, Ahaz thinks he's got a trick up his sleeve. It's called the Assyrians. They were an army that wanted to attack Syria and Israel. So Ahaz thought, I've got my guys. But Isaiah reminds Ahaz who he is and who he's talking to. Isaiah 7.13 says, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary men 
that you weary my God also? Ahaz refused to ask God for a sign, but God made true on his word anyway and just gave him a sign. God said the sign would be an appearance of a child and before he grew up to know the difference between right and wrong, the enemies of Ahaz would be defeated and all of his troubles would go away. But the story doesn't end there. Isaiah tells Ahaz, because he refused to ask God for a sign, your kingdom is also going to be defeated by the people that you think will help you, the Assyrians. Of course, Isaiah's prophecies come true and Ahaz dies known as an evil king forever. Now you might think that this is just another story in the Old Testament of a bad king, but this one is different in one very remarkable way. Let's look really closely at the sign in chapter 7 verse 14. It says, Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Now, if you've grown up in church, you've probably heard this verse before and know what the sign is. Or do you? Let's look at the three most important players in this sign. The lady, the miracle, and the baby. The unique part about this sign is that a child will be born from a woman who is unmarried and who is still a virgin. Awkward. This should strike you as odd. It would have struck Isaiah as odd. It probably blew over Ahaz's head, but it doesn't matter. I'm pretty sure it's impossible for a woman to have a child without any help, if you know what I'm saying. But there is help. And that's the next part, the miracle. It's important to see here that the miracle wasn't that God spoke to Isaiah in a prophecy or that a baby was born. The miracle is that the conception took place in a way that was impossible. One day, an unmarried woman goes to sleep in her bed by herself. The next day she wakes up and she's pregnant. Now, how could this have possibly happened in any kind of human way? The only way we can know is by knowing who the baby is. Isaiah says that the baby's name will be called Emmanuel, and this means God with us. God is saying through Isaiah to Ahaz that the sign will be that a woman will have a baby without any help, and this baby will have my presence in him. This is a miraculous sign that Ahaz refuses to look at. Because Ahaz refused to ask for this sign, he also missed out on seeing the significance of this sign. So what significance does this sign have for us? Well, this miraculous sign reappears to us in Matthew chapter 1. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin will conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Here we see that this sign is not just a prophecy, but it's something that happens in real life. A virgin named Mary, who's unmarried, conceives a baby by the Holy Spirit. I mean, this is a mind-blowing, incredible miracle. But this is also a sign that God is truly with us. At Christmas, we celebrate the birth of Jesus. But it's important to know that the birth of Jesus isn't a miracle. Babies are born every day. But the true miracle is that the Holy Spirit intervened in young Mary's life and she conceived and had a son named Jesus Christ, the Son of God, God with us. Ahaz needed a sign to get rid of the enemies that were causing him a lot of trouble. We need a more miraculous sign to get us out of the trouble of sin in our hearts. There's no human way possible for us to do this. God knew that it would take a special once in history event for us to be separated from the problem of evil in our own hearts. So the miracle of Christmas is that Mary conceived a baby boy by God's power. And that savior was Jesus. He is the promised Emmanuel. He is the one who has the power to wipe all enemies off the face of the earth, but also to wipe all sin away in our hearts. 
I think the message in Isaiah chapter 7 is that if you have been weary of pain and sin in your life, it's time for you to ask God for a sign. And it's the sign that he has already provided in the miraculous conception of Jesus Christ. And the sign is one that God has already provided in the person and the work of Jesus Christ. When we look to this sign, we can't help but look at the life of Jesus and what he did. He not only had a miraculous beginning in this world, but he had a miraculous end in this world. His act of sacrifice on the cross at the end of his life showed us that he had the power to wipe away our sin. This power was demonstrated when Jesus rose from the dead. And the Bible tells us that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and we believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. I pray that as you read Isaiah 7, that you will be convinced that the sign God has provided is but more than a miracle. It's a person, a God who wants to have a relationship with you. May you be blessed in your reading of God's word this week. We have had an awesome time with you today. It's unfortunately all we have time for this week, but uh, gather with us again next week. Uh, but this week, before then, continue to live to know Jesus and make Jesus known. Amen. Amen.